six, we are live. Welcome to our special team coverage of the Yukon Men's National Champions Victory Parade and Rally. We are live in downtown Hartford. I'm Caitlin Francis. And I'm Eric Parker. Thank you for being with us on what is certainly a blustery day here in downtown Hartford. But the thousands of UConn fans who have packed into the capital city, they don't seem to notice the weather at all. They are here to celebrate. They are. And you know what? It might be blustery, but no one seems to care, as Eric just mentioned. We are here, and we are ready to celebrate because they are back-to-back -back champions. And we have team coverage for you here as the UConn men are getting ready to step off here. We've got Luke Hydash. Unqua Estonia, and we are bringing you live aerial coverage with Joan Free to bring you all the sights and sounds of this victory parade and rally. Let's give you a little lay of the land of what to expect over the next hour. You see the parade route there on your screen. The players are up by the state capitol right now, just getting ready to head off. We're probably about half a mile as the crow flies away from them, right outside the XL Center. That's where the rally will be held. We have Drone 3 up in the air. We have our crews along the route. And already, downtown Hartford is packed and ready for this parade. Yeah, it's a short parade route, but uh, I think the city said that they're expecting about 45,000 people to be in attendance here today. And within the couple of hours that we've been here, we've seen everything fill out very quickly. There are a lot of a lot of excited fans who are ready to celebrate. So let's send things straight to uh, Channel 3 Iowa News reporter Luke Hydash, who's got a first-hand view right by the soldiers and Sailors Memorial Arch. Hey, Luke. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Eric. We are starting off smooth here at the start of the parade. Let's show you what is happening here. 11 o'clock start, and they weren't kidding. You can see the start of the motorcade coming down Trinity Street here. They're going to be turning onto Jewel Street, making a right, making their way over towards you, towards the XL Center. And you can see leading the pack here is the motorcycles from Hartford Police. Beyond that, we have some color guard, the Yukon fire trucks, and eventually way back there, the folks that everybody are here for, the Yukon men basketball team. Let's zoom out a little bit here and take a look at the crowd and see what we have here. Everybody taking pictures, very excited for the start of this parade in just a few minutes here. We were expecting about 40,000 people to be here in downtown Hartford today to view this parade and congratulate these 2024 NCAA champions. And of course, we got everybody a little happy this morning, no doubt. Everybody is cheering, everybody is ready and anxious to see those men as they wake their way down on that bus. And here we go. The crowd starts to cheer as the motorcade begins to move again. The parade comes through the arches, turns onto Jewel Street, and the parade has officially started to congratulate these Yukon Huskies as the Hartford Police motorcade makes their way into the group. Let's listen. Got a lot of people, of course, out excited taking pictures this morning. Got selfie sticks all over the place. People trying to take pictures. The Yukon crowd, the Yukon chant in the background that you can hear as everybody is, is, is excited this morning to congratulate these Huskies on their win. There go the colors now turning on to Jewel Street. And here comes the Yukon fire truck, of course, bit of a joke down here at the start of the parade trying to get that truck around the corner on Jewel Street you can see everybody taking a step back or two hopefully they're able to make the turn we may have to move the camera here a tad so bear with us here as we make way for this we got a real up close personal shot here we might have to move back a tad here here we go pictures lots of people excited things getting started here on Trinity Street we'll toss it over to Caitlin and Eric for a look at things over the XL Center you gotta, you gotta love live TV he had to move out of the way of the fire truck live on the air it's fantastic tell us who else is in the parade today. all right so we just saw the parade is officially underway we just stepped off with the Hartford Police Department color guard the Yukon fire truck as we saw Luke had to get out of the way for that uh, Hartford Business Improvement District, the Magic Soul Drumline, which we're excited to see because that'll bring a lot of energy. People will be able to dance and get excited for that. Eversource, 
Uh, Donovan Klingen's dad works for Eversource. We've got a local connection there. Uh, the Yukon Cheer Alumni Association, uh, Connecticut Army National Guard, among so many others, which we'll be bringing to you live. We've got uh, Drone 3 up in the air bringing you that aerial view right now. And, of course, this isn't just about this parade. It's about the accomplishments of this team during the course of this season. Back-to-back -back championships, putting Coach Hurley in uh, company with people like John Wooden, Rupp, Krzyzewski, big-time names in college basketball, but also what the team accomplished, 140 points, their total margin of victory, averaging 23.3. After last year's championship, a lot of people said, well, they ended up with an easy pad. They had a lot of big seeds that, that they didn't end up having to face. Well, this year they faced four of the top 25 teams in the Ken Palm. If you're a, a basketball geek, you know about Ken Pomeroy. Four of the top 25 teams, and they beat those teams by an average of 21 points. 21 points against four of the top 25. Not an easy path at all, but they did it, and they're here today to celebrate. And they had a little bit of an uphill battle, too. They were not expected to be a one seed for the majority of their their season. So they really had to kind of fight for this position once again this season. And they proved why they're, we're the basketball capital of the world here. Stores Connecticut. Now, once again, oh, there's the drum line as we're taking a live look uh, through one of our cameras here. So, again, I'm sure people are having this, the best time being able to watch this uh, from the parade route this morning. Well, let's keep our, uh, our basketball nerdiness going. And let's go to the sports guy. Uncle Sonia <laughs> is out along the course. Uncle, can you hear us? What are you seeing where you are? Well, Eric, Caitlin, good morning. It's been a bit of a slow build down here, but as we'll try to give you a chance to see, there are people lined up and down Trumbull Street. The people have been packed. They've been ready. I even copped a scarf right before we got on because it was really, really windy, but the sun's starting to come out. It's a really nice view, and you want to talk sports nerd stuff. I mean, I'm the guy for that, and consider this. UConn set an NCAA tournament record for double-digit wins in a row. That's how many games they won in a row, by double digits. Offhand, that is 10 wins in a row, actually 12 wins in a row, since they won both of those games in the Final Four. But looking at the way these people have flocked for this team, there's a lot of good reason for it. It's been an even attack from this team, and there's always somebody to root for. You look at someone like Tristan Newton, who transferred to UConn, was a bit under the radar before he became one of the best point guards in the country. You look at someone like Cam Spencer, who before he came to UConn, had never played in the NCAA tournament. And now, of course, they're national champions, along with big man Donovan Klingen, who just confirmed that he would be leaving for the NBA draft. And keep this in mind as well. This is a team that lost most of its starters from last year's national championship team. Three starters as we see the police department ready to turn up the street to lead the motorcade. But this team will stand among some of the greatest teams of all time and we get a chance to celebrate them downtown Hartford. I'm going to send it right back to you, Eric and Caitlin, as we get ready for the people out there. Thank you. And you talked about it, some of those role players. I mean, last year we had this rally out here. Tristan Newton said he was going to the NBA. He ended up pulling his name out of the yep. draft. Cam Spencer, so many UConn fans were crying when Nick Timberlake went to Kansas. Cam Spencer comes to UConn and turns out to be a guy you feel like was on that team for 100 Forever. years. He, yeah. he was a little mini Dan Hurley clone with yep. those fist pumps, getting the crowd into it, and, of course, draining threes turned out to be just the perfect player in the perfect time. Uh, six, seven, eight perfect players at the perfect time for this team. So you talked about being a little mini Dan Hurley. We have a lot of people who... Uh, don't love uh, the, the, the atmosphere or the attitude behind the UConn team spirit. So maybe we can touch on that when we come back. But first, we're going to come take a little break. We're going to come back. Much more of the UConn Victory Parade live from downtown Hartford when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back here to our special team coverage of celebrating the champs, the UConn men's national championship back-to-back -back winners here we are live in downtown hartford eric parker caitlin francis here and we are having a great time with 
our closest 40,000 friends. And it's, it's, it's hard to think about that number as we prepared for this during the week. And then you come out here and you look at the sea of blue and of Huskies and of, of cheering people. They've had the Yukon chant going three or four times already today. Yeah. It's no doubt there's a huge number of fans here in uh, downtown Hartford. Yeah, and this is why we're taking a live look here right at the Yukon bus carrying the national champions. And um, they haven't totally gotten ready to leave the state capitol just yet. However, the team, we're taking a look at the team right now. They're, they're inching closer to the parade route, but they've been tossing some, some merch off to, to fans, signing autographs, chatting with everybody who's gathering around the team bus. So uh, we're going to continue to bring you a live look at uh, some of the players who are getting ready to, to interact with everybody throughout the rest well, of the day. It's, for so many of the fans, that's it. They just want to catch a glimpse. They want to see some of these guys they've been cheering yep. for, whether it was here at the XL Center, out at Gamble, just on their televisions. They want to see these guys with their own eyes, give them a little a high five, give yep. them a little love, and say, you know, congrats on being back-to-back -back champs. Kate, we have a, a special guest here oh, joining us. Oh, look Come on in, babe. Hi. This is Tom Emery. If you go to UConn Games, you know Tom Emery. He is Big Red. Thank you for joining us. You've already pumped up the crowd a couple times, Tom. You were at these games this year. The, the, the university put out a Big Red Finder so everybody could find out where you were. What did you think about this year? It was phenomenal. I mean, this is 50 years of basketball for me, and it's just been another phenomenal year. It, I can always say that it can never get better, but it always does. We, I talked to uh, Wayne Norman this week, uh, who's the color analyst. He's been calling UConn right. games since 79. He said this was the best team he had ever seen. Do you agree? I won't say that because I hold nothing against any other kids before it. Every team is great. When they win a championship, it's either greater. So I would never take anything away from from 99 till now, I would never say that any team is greater than the other because they've all won championships. But you would say that UConn teams are greater than all the other teams. Absolutely. I mean, that's why they call me a blue blood. Here's my only fact that I want everybody out there to know, and it's a real big fact. I am only a fan. If there wasn't 16,000 other people out there, there would be no Big Red. And that's the way I feel about it. So thank God for all of them. Well, and I know all the players said all year the, the love that they got from the fans and the support that they felt meant so much to them. Could you feel it from your vantage point? I love you. I see you when you Twitter people. Yeah. The feeling just runs through you. I mean, the enthusiasm, the the the, the anticipation is just is emotional. I mean, you can't in, until you expect until you experience an NCAA game. You would never ever know how much goes into it. It's just an exciting period. Well, game day, Connor, had you help lead everybody in a chair earlier. Would you do that for us? You want to see if the big red magic works from our let's position? See if Connor can do it for me right now. All right. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can get everybody. Look, they're all looking at you, Tom. What do you think? What am I supposed to do? Will I give it one of these? Let's get out of the way. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for pumping up the crowd all year. We appreciate it. It's been my pleasure meeting you both. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Go Huskies. Should we check in with our reporters out in the field? Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to go to a sports reporter, Uko Sonia, for another check of what's going on. We're the station right now. Uko, what's going on? Well, Caitlin, Eric, everyone's moved closer to try to catch everybody turning to the other side of the street. It's a good thing that we have the police out here because they actually blocked off this street about 30 minutes ago because 
under normal circumstances, they'd be driving on the wrong side of the street, and there'd be plenty of tickets being handed out. But this time around, everyone's driving just to get closer to the Excel Center. Everybody can load out, and everything can be great. We had a couple fans that at least wanted to smile and be in the camera. Nobody wanted to talk, and that's okay because they're taking in all the action, which makes sense to us. One Very Career Academy is bringing their marching band and their drum line up all the way through to continue this parade. But if you thought people weren't excited before, trust me, even more people started filing in. This was scheduled to start at 11 o'clock, and people still started pouring out of whether it's salute across the street, any of the apartments down the road, people are all in on the Huskies and with good reason. An incredible sight to see so far, to think that we're just getting started. Mind you, this was a UConn team that stayed number one pretty much throughout most of the winter. They didn't take a loss at full strength until they played Creighton late in the season in late February on the road. The dominance of this team is finally being celebrated because usually there have been a lot of number one overall seeds that have not taken it home. And UConn is one of those that got the job done. Hartford Athletic, they'll be playing next week at Trinity Health Stadium, but they are a part of this parade celebrating the champions. There's Dylan right there waving to the fans, soccer ball antennas. You got to love it. It is an all-state affair. Every team in this state is coming out to show their support and their pride with good reason. Another UConn chant came up as well. Absolutely incredible. Oh, I appreciate you. You're the, you're the best. Oh, that's so kind of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What an incredible time out here. And the sun started to come out. I mean, could you ask for a better day? I mean, at this time last year, it was windy, a little rainy, but then people were celebrating because they had won the national championship. So needless to say, there's a lot to celebrate. But now the weather's better too. I guess our Channel 3 meteorology team, I think they saw this one coming. So absolutely fantastic as this continues. Key Bank is coming to turn the corner as well. Just a fantastic sight right here on Trumbull Street. This is always an interesting part of the parade where everyone's following each other. And you're still trying to figure out where everything else goes from here. We're still waiting for our first view of the UConn men's basketball team. But for now, Eric Caitlin, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Unqua. So Unqua just said that it's finally the sun's coming out where he is at. It's not windy there anymore. It's still windy here, but no one seems to care. The music's going. Everyone's dancing, celebrating, taking photos. Uh, and last year's victory parade, because reminder, we are back-to-back -back national champions. This is the sixth men's national title. And uh, that means that they're tied with North Carolina for third most of all time, trailing UCLA and Kentucky. That's a huge accomplishment. Well, and of course, not to not to say anything I shouldn't say, but I did look up the last three P. Okay. UCLA in the '70s was the last time we had a three P. That was John Wooden and a guy named Bill Walton was on that team. Uh, something of a basketball legend, a Hall of Famer. So maybe. Well, Maybe we'll be back here next year, Kate. We were talking about this before we went to break a few minutes ago. Dan Hurley did mention that he was looking for that in the locker room post-national championship win. So will they do it? Well, and as we look at our drone three pictures, you can see the players are starting to make yep. their way along the parade route. You know, that we, we know that uh, Donovan Klingon gave the news. He's headed to the NBA. Yep. Uh, he is expected to be a lottery pick. Uh, going to have a great career, make Bristol very proud. Uh, me, almost everyone expects Stephon Castle, who some draft boards have him in like the one, two, three spot. Yeah. So certainly couldn't blame the freshman for leaving after one year at UConn. Alex Caravan, a big wild card, he has not yet said what his plans are for next year. He's talked a lot about who his point guard here at UConn will be next it year. It does sound like he might come back. It certainly sounds like he wants to come back. And he's been saying, Brianna Stewart on the woman's side. Yep. She run four in a row. That's rarefied air. If if it was possible, Alex Garbett might be the guy to do it. Well, we would love to see him back here in blue and white one more season, that's for sure. And uh, for another live look at our parade route, Luke Hydash is going to give us a personal bird's eye view. Luke, what's going on where you are? 
it's kind of like Mardi Gras out here, Caitlin and Eric. People are throwing little basketballs and beads out into the crowd. Show you what we're seeing right now. Here we go. There you go. Throwing t-shirts now out of the bus. This, you can already see, is sealed. National back-to-back -back champions. Everybody down here on Trinity Street excited to see all parts of this parade coming down through those, through the arch, head down Jewel Street and make its way over towards where Umqua is and then eventually down, finishing up at the Excel Center. Well, these guys continue to throw some t-shirts out. Let's check in with our new friends here from Shelton. Hi guys, how are you? Good. Good? What are you excited about today? What are you, what are you most looking forward to? The team. The team, yeah. What do you what have you liked so far? You got some beads, you got a t-shirt, good for you. I like UConn. You like UConn, yeah? You play basketball yourself? Yeah, maybe you'll be a UConn player one day, huh? Yeah, we can only hope, right? And what about you? You feeling good down here? Yeah, feeling good. Everybody's feeling good. This is a very exciting part of the parade route right here. We're right at the very start of it. We're going to get some of the first glimpses of that team as they make their way through the arch here just a little bit. You heard Eric say uh, just a few minutes ago that they are stepping off from the Capitol now, starting to make their way uh, off the ground. We heard a lot of people earlier say, uh -huh. hey, I'm hoping to get a signature or something. We heard Eric say they're signing autographs. So a lot of fingers crossed down in this neck of the woods. But for now, we'll send it back to Eric and Caitlin for a check on things over at the other end of the room. Yeah, and we just heard that uh, the team bus is making its way slowly towards where Luke is. Inching. I think I heard inching was yes, the word that very, the very day. slowly. They're trying to make sure that everybody along the route gets a, a nice good look to be able to wave, maybe get a basketball or a t-shirt, uh, maybe that just nice photo op, you know, yeah. good picture with well, Listen, the team. I mean, it's a perfect selfie op as the bus goes by, right? Exactly. But every time I turned around, Kate, I don't know how well you could see uh, on your screen just the massive humanity that's behind us we have packed so in here people. outside the well, we're Center. right at the end of the parade because right to the side of us is where the rally is going to be as soon as the team gets here. So just for everybody at home, we've got the Hartford Mayor, Rudin R. is going to be speaking, Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz, the Governor Ned Lamont, as well as uh, the Athletics Director, Dan Hurley, Coach Dan Hurley is going to be speaking along with our, of course, Team, team members, Donovan Klingon, Alex Caravan, Cam Spencer, and Tristan Newton, who are going to be making brief remarks as soon as they make their way here to the, the well, rally stage. And we saw last year, and it ended up not coming to fruition, but Tristan Newton made an announcement here saying that he was going to be going off to the NBA. He decided to pull his name out of the draft. But certainly news can be made uh, here at the rally yeah. as well. And a lot of people wondering what that starting lineup is going to look like when they come out for their first game in November trying to three-peat. Yeah, so we're taking a look right where the Sailors and Soldiers Memorial Arch is right now. So we're waiting for that team bus to make its way. As you said, it's Inching, and we've got uh, the crowd next to us dancing. We, My, we've got Miley a Miley Cyrus, Cyrus dance party it's, in the background. It's a party in the USA, but it's a party here in Hartford today as we are celebrating the UConn men's we, well, national we have, we have one or two buildings still blocking the sun, so right now dancing along to Miley Cyrus is all we've got outside know, the XL exactly. Center. Exactly. But you know what? We're excited. It's a fantastic day. There we go. As that uh, looks like the cheer, cheer team, dance team is there making its way through. So we're getting closer. Who wants a free tea? You, you may be able to hear game day Connor in the background. There's Coach Dan Hurley. He's pumping up the crowd as he does at the XL Center yep. to Gamble as well. Uh, we just saw a shot of Dan Hurley there on the bus. Uh, nobody loves this celebration more than him. No. Uh, well, I think I think these 40,000 people like this celebration just as much today. You know, and there's, there's such an interesting thing with Coach Hurley. So many people saying, you know, his yelling at the refs, his, his up and down on the sidelines. Uh, there was the, the famous shot in the, the championship game where actually gave Cam Spencer a little shove because Cam wasn't running quite the offense he wanted. And he has said that what makes him and Cam Spencer similar, he called them both basketball psychopaths. <laughs> but you know what? He's our psychopath. He is. And maybe if he was the coach of another team, I wouldn't love it as much, but gosh, I love it. But we love it here. So we are so glad that he is... Uh, bringing wins here to the state of Connecticut, basketball capital of the world. Yeah, a, ba a phrase that Dick Vitale, the legendary Dick Vitale, first used that phrase way back in 1996. The women had just won, the men had a big victory, and as the uh, the final buzzer sounded, he declared scores the bus, the uh, cat basketball capital of the world. Just amazing stuff. And then that's the shot that we all wanted to see: the team bus coming right through the arch. There, uh, Luke Hydash was standing right in front of that. Just 
a short time ago. So uh, all the fans just kind of crowding around trying to get that shot. And you can see they're throwing some T-shirts off the bus there. Uh, everybody taking photos. So um, that's what everybody came here for, was to yeah, see the team and to celebrate. That's going to be the center of attention now that they are off and moving. You can see yeah. uh, Donovan Klingon there. Uh, you it's can hard see, to miss him. It is hard to miss uh, the seven foot two uh, center as he yep. uh, makes one last run as a Husky before he heads off to I the know. NBA. Yep. So we do have, we've got three uh, members of the UConn men's team from Connecticut, two of them from Bristol, and then Andrew Hurley from Glastonbury. So um, obviously we're super proud to have some hometown, hometown kids. Andrew Hurley, who uh, has played in 12 consecutive uh, NCAA tournament games, the UConn margin of victory being uh, so large that Andrew Hurley got off the bench in every single game. His uh, joking nickname is the Human Victory Cigar. He comes in and dribbles it out when there's only a few seconds left in the game. But he's been in 12 straight yep. NCAA tournament games. Pretty amazing. Well, we were talking about some of like the superstitions that Dan Hurley has, right? The the M and M's that he can't. He has to have so many M and M's, and they can't be the colors of the opposing teams. So he has to throw those away. And the, the dragon. I was uh, going to say, you, you got to talk about his undies case. You got to talk about it. But I feel like Andrew might be one of the superstitions too, right? But, well, listen, he's uh, Andrew, uh, Dan Hurley, I'm trying to say, with the dragon underwear. Andrea Hurley has to bring a portable washing machine on the road <laughs> so she can wash his undies before the next game. He wore the entire same suit, the yep. same shoes. Yeah. He said he had worn through the soles on the shoes, but he was so superstitious. Yep. He wouldn't change a thing. And gosh, I think he's going to have to run it out again. Again, next I year. think so. I, he said that they're being put away yeah. for the rest of the year until next season. Well, I think he said he needs a cobbler in the offseason for those <laughs> shoes. Uh, as we continue to take a look, you can see the uh, the celebration. It looks like the band going through there on the back of that uh, float. Uh, the, the, the wonderful pep band that's been, uh, whether you were here in the state or watching on television, playing that UConn fight song, getting everybody fired up. Uh, a big part of this, just as the players are, as the cheerleaders are, the dance team, the Met band, just a, a huge, big team victory and a big yeah. team back-to-back -back championship. Yeah, and then it's just because we're watching so much of this happen as it's it's happening for you here at home. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan the 14th and Jonathan the 15th, uh, both of them making an appearance here. Uh, we've got Coca-Cola, the Waterbury Career Academy High School Band and Drumline and Drill Team, Connecticut Realtors, New England Honda, Yukon Health, Hartford Athletic. Uh, we've got Key Bank, Hartford's Proud, Drill, Drum and Dance Corps, Mohegan Sun, Fair Smokehouse Barbecue, Hartford Healthcare, Laz Parking. Uh, we've got the Yukon VIPs, Yukon Police, you can cheer uh, the pep band, as Eric just mentioned, and of course the coaches, along with the team bus that we're seeing right here from uh, with the team well, the you, members. You and keep talking about it. The souvenirs being tossed out into the crowd. Everybody just loving that. I know. So uh, there's so many, so many uh, different organizations and groups taking place in the parade, which uh, we'd be remiss to mention that uh, it's all thanks to sponsors and donors that put this together in a very short amount of time. All right, we are still, we're, all right, well, let's go back out to Luke Hideout. She's talking to some of the fans here this, this afternoon. Take it away, Luke. Yeah, hey, we have got our friend here, Jake. We talked to Jake earlier. The big thing you were most excited for was seeing that bus, right? It just happened. How you feel? My mom took my hat and she was like, you want me to go get, toss it up? And I was like, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, he had one of those championship hats on, the back-to-back -back ones with the seal that's new this year, uh, and, and you were hoping to get inside. What was it like seeing all those players we talked about earlier, Donovan Klinge and the coach Hurley? What was it like seeing them in person? They're big. They're big. They're big. You know, what were you, what were you thinking when you saw that bus coming down? I what was, was it like? like uh, I didn't realize they were throwing uh, uh, shirts, and then they threw it. I was like, jeez, this is, I thought, this is more crazy. Like, this is crazy. And when you watched that tournament all year, what was it like game to game? Very nerve-wracking. Nerve very, big, very scary. Big UConn fan, big UConn family all the way from South Carolina flying up here for the parade today. Things kind of clearing out here uh, in this end of the parade route, of course. We saw the bus go by, making its way towards Unquan now. Uh, and, of course, we want to send back things back to you, uh, Caitlin and Eric, as we can get an update on where that team is now on the route. Guys? Whoop.
Luke, thank you. You can All see right, uh, you. one of the Yukon buses uh, pulling in here with the, the windows down, people hanging out. It's a, a little too far away from our vantage point to yet see who that is uh, hanging out. We know uh, we've got the live look uh, we saw earlier of the players' bus, the red uh, double-decker yep. open-back bus. But uh, we see this, and the fans here at the XL Center are excited to see that as well. All right, fantastic. So we'll obviously continue to keep you posted here with our live team coverage. But for now, we're going to send things off to break. We'll be back with more of our UConn Victory parade and rally coverage right after this. Welcome back. We are live in downtown Hartford and we are getting ready to welcome the champion UConn basketball team. They are just so much closer to getting here in front of the XL Center for that rally. Uh, we're just waiting, but we're welcoming uh, the band. They're almost here. The, the pep band yep. has just shown up. You may uh, be, you can see them there as we take that shot. They are tossing T-shirts into the crowd. Uh, Game Day Connor, who is the host at the UConn game, pumping this crowd up as they uh, all buy to get one of those T-shirts that's being tossed in. We've got music playing. We've got a pep band. It's just a great scene here. I know. It's so much fun. There's a lot of... A lot of energy, a lot of people. There's, I think, 40 to 45,000 people were expected to be out here this morning. The wind was not deterring anybody from being out here. We And the rain held off, which was some good news. But uh, as we wait for the, the men to get here, uh, we're taking a live look at that pep band making its way towards the stage. Um, you know, this was a historic season for the Yukon Huskies. And um, they didn't really give any other team a chance. Yeah, it's it's been the, the things that they accomplished this their year certainly are remarkable in how they ran through that tournament with their long streak of wins. But as a sports fan, you can't help but think, gosh, what's next? So, uh, you know, there's a lot of talent returning to this team. Hassan Di Diara, who played was the uh, sixth man of the year in the Big East, a defensive lockdown player, averaged uh, 13 points a game. So he got in there and did some real work uh, for UConn. He's back next year, maybe running the point. People like Solomon Ball, he didn't get a lot of minutes playing that he probably expected he would. Samson Johnson, who was so, so valuable, especially in that final game, uh, that a lot of people said when Samson Johnson was able to match up with Edie, that's when that game was won for UConn. Just remarkable, and a lot of these guys who are coming back next year. Yeah, and, you know, the Huskies, just the third team to go back-to-back -back since 1973, which I think we had talked about. But um, we're going to hear from Ugo Sonye when we come back. We're still waiting for the UConn men to get here. To and, of the, course, the team yeah, is almost we're here. we're still waiting, so we'll bring that to you live. But first, we're going to take another break. Come on back. We're going to continue to celebrate the UConn men with the Victory Parade and Rally. That's all coming up. Stay with us. From retirement that you need to plan for. Take our free retirement quiz to learn more. How well you're prepared will determine. Welcome back here to downtown Hartford. The moment we've been waiting for is here. I just saw a national championship trophy in the hands of Alex Caravan. That is the parade bus. Those are your back-to-back -back national champs celebrating with their fans. Yes, and this is, as you just said, the moment that everyone's been waiting for. The confetti is flying. The cheers are loud and proud. Game Day Connor is literally...
probably just waiting to make the announcement that your back-to-back -back national champions are making their way to the podium. Pet Bands here, literally all that you confetti. See, you see the governor up there as well, uh, standing on the parade bus along with the players. Uh, <laughs> There's somebody has tossed a basketball up there. That's a creative attempt to get some autographs, tossing a ball up to the players. Governor Ned Lamont is fist pumping. Everyone is just living the best life ever today. And this is what Connecticut literally lives for. We are the basketball capital of the world. So victory parades here. And you see we've got the confetti in the air now. We've got the crowd cheering. You see Alex Caravan there hoisting, hoisting. the national yep. championship trophy. The second trophy in uh, just just a year to come back here to this state. Back-to-back -back champs, the first time since Billy Donovan's Florida team did it back in 2006 and 7. So this is electric. The atmosphere here is fantastic. Everyone is... And you see uh, Donovan clinging now with the trophy. If you look just behind Donovan, Andrew Hurley is standing there with the WWE wrestling belt. Uh, so they've got all sorts of celebration going on. So many people are uh, are here to, to spell out UConn with their arms and give the champs a cheer. And we're just listening to all the UConn chants and cheers. This is what everybody came here for today. As soon as they get off the bus, we'll listen to all of the very brief remarks. Again, Harford's mayor, lieutenant governor, governor, uh, coach Dan Hurley, and then a few of the players will be making a brief and remarks. And you see Dan Hurley here at the back of the bus as we get another blast of confetti. He's got the basketball. Looks like all the autographs are concluded. He's going to toss it back. Andrea Hurley there as well. Uh, you see the two young kids uh, just in front of Game yep. Day Connor. Luke Murray, the assistant coach, uh, he had his kids out there with him for so many of these events. They were at press conferences and locker rooms. Uh, his dad, the famous comedian Bill Murray, yes. uh, so ubiquitous behind the bench throughout this championship season as well. So what's going to happen now is uh, Game Day Connor will probably help get them off the bus. They'll make their way down to the podium. We're going to let them do their speaking, but they're they're still getting some of the T-shirts and all the merch, and they're, everything's flying. All these fans are just looking for just a little piece of this history. Back-to-back -back national champions here in downtown Hartford, right in front of the XL Center. And, and you can see they're towering above Donovan Clinton, which must mean he's standing on a seat. Uh, <laughs> Apostolos Romaglu, who just threw another uh, uh, T-shirt into the crowd. Samson Johnson, Hassan Diar. You see the players there filtering off the bus. They're going to be coming up onto the stage now to be part of this celebration. And had to say a few words to their, their adoring fans who have hack this block of the uh, downtown then, Hartford. Eric, I don't know if you can see, but right in the corner there next to game day, Connor is Jonathan the Husky. That Jonathan the uh, uh, 14th is standing there. I'm told Jonathan yep. the 15th, who is the current mascot, is here as well. I can't see if they're both up on the stage. Uh, the players giving the dogs a little love as they uh, toss a few more t-shirts up into the crowd. Yep, all right, the team is making its way to the stage here to, to welcome the crowd, again, 40 to 45,000 people expected. It's a very busy day here in Harvard in addition to the championship parade and rally. The home show is taking place. We've got a yard goats game coming up in a couple of hours. There is that trophy being hoisted by Donovan Klingen. 7-2 from Bristol, Connecticut. Connecticut kid. And, and what a story as well. I mean, he wore number 32, his tribute to his, his late mother, mother, who lost her battle with cancer when he was just a teenager. She was a star. Stacy was a star when she was up at University of Maine. Maine. Uh, she wore number 32. He also wore number 32. It's now been retired, of course. He'll be the last Husky to wear it uh, after it was retired for Rip Hamilton. And, you know, that's part of this Husky story as well, Kate. It's not just these players. It's this entire community. We saw Rip Hamilton, Emeka Okafor, Rudy Gay. Ray Allen, yep. all at that national yes. championship game. And as Donovan Klingon said when he, yeah, of course, yeah, Jim Calhoun, but as Donovan Klingon said when he announced that he was heading off to the NBA, he said he will be a Husky for life, and we've seen that.
These Huskies are Huskies for life. It's Khalid El Amin, who was the, the key cog that helped him take down Duke and bring back that 99 championship. These guys who came out there and, and really are now Huskies for life, and these adoring fans just love them. Well, Eric, I think that that's a testament to what UConn means to the state of Connecticut. UConn really is a representative of Connecticut as a whole. And UConn basketball, really. I mean, if you think about what this means to the whole state and how people really rally around these teams, people go see UConn play, and they have for decades. This is a, uh, a legacy team and a legacy sport and a legacy school. And you see now Hartford Mayor Arun and Arlopalum just now there up on the stage as well. Uh, you see Andrew Hurley is now wearing the WWE belt. <laughs> Uh, always the character, as uh, we said earlier, uh, his uh, joking nickname, the human victory cigar, the guy who comes in to dribble out the clock in the big wins. Uh, but you can see the team up there. You can see, as I said, Luke, Coach Luke Murray, assistant coach with his kids. Tom Moore is up there. Uh, Kamani Young up there as well. So we have the, uh, the, the, the crowd that has gotten this done, the coaches who ran what might be one of the most intricate uh, sets of plays. Uh, other coaches saying they would look at the UConn playbook and just couldn't believe how intricate it was. Dan Hurley said, listen, we started training for this thing in June. You were all off at the beach. You were on summer vacation. We were running these sets, and that's why they were so elite when it mattered. Just getting the crowd all ramped up. And you know what? We've been following this team since the beginning of the season, obviously since last what season as well. The getting the crowd all amped up as they're getting ready to speak. But um, obviously with the NCAA tournament, March Madness, we had crews on the road. We had crews in Phoenix, Boston, uh, Madison Square Garden, making sure that we had all of the coverage brought to everybody at home so they could follow along with the UConn Huskies. Well, and of course, so many people saying, you know, uh, going to Madison Square Garden, they jokingly called that Stores South. Then they went to the Barclays Center and they said Stores a little farther south. Then they went up to Boston and we had Stores North, in, stores the, North. in the tournament. And then right down to Phoenix, Stores Southwest. So UConn, the, the fans traveling, the contingent, contingent of fans going out there as uh, Hartford Mayor Arun and our alum from takes to the stage. Let's listen in. We are so excited to have you here in Hartford. This is your city. I hope I hope you spend the whole day with party with us because there's nothing more electric than when the Huskies come to town. <laughs> and to, to, to Coach Hurley and the Huskies, I just want to say on behalf of UConn Nation, you make us so proud. You have dominated. You have shown for the second year in a row that UConn are true blue bloods. And that, and that this is the center of basketball for the last 25 to 30 years. Am I right, Coach? This is, this is the most dominant team of the 21st century, and we are so proud of our UConn Huskies. So what do you say, UConn Nation? You ready to come back next year to this spot? Let's go, UConn! I want to introduce you to your UConn Huskies! Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Up next, please help me welcome our esteemed Lieutenant Governor, Susan Bysowitz! Oh, hello, Husky Nation! Are we so proud of this amazing team? Yes! Are we gonna have a third back-to-back -back championship next year? And are the Huskies gonna win? The Husky women gonna win next year? Woo! All right, congratulations. We're so proud of you. We are the college basketball capital of the world. Go Huskies! Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor. Up next, please help me welcome the governor of the great state of Connecticut where champions are made and championships are built, Ned Lamont. Hey, America, this is what the basketball capital of America looks like right here. Let's hear it for the Huskies. The women are gonna be next year. Look at the guys. We are the champions, my friends. God bless you all. Thank you, Governor Lamont. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage the athletic director of this championship program, 
David Benedict! Best fans in the world right here! Six years ago, we had a chance to introduce our head coach, Dan Hurley, and I get a chance to do it again. Two-time national championship head coach, Dan Hurley! Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Come get lo loud as shit, come on. Back to back. Hey, everywhere we went this year, yeah. <laughs> yeah, get loud, let's go. Hey, hey. Everywhere we went this year, every arena we went into, on the road, MSG, Brooklyn, Boston, the Phoenix, we said the same thing every time we walked into the arena. We always said, the champs are here. Right, the champs are here. The, the champs are here today in Hartford with the best fans in the world, right? Basketball capital world, stores Connecticut, back-to-back -back champs. Back-to-back -back champs. Some of the greatest players to ever wear the uniform, right? Some of the greatest players to ever wear the UConn uniform are up here. And then next year we go for the three-peat. Let's go. Let's welcome Connecticut native, Yukon's own, Donovan Klingon! Yukon <laughs> Nation, let's go. Back to back champs, what do you say? Nah, I just want to thank everyone. This team wants to thank everyone. You guys gave us a lot of support, a lot of boost this year. You guys made us want to go out there and win another one. I appreciate you guys. You guys have been the best fans to me for the past two years. I'll, I'll cherish those moments for the rest of my life. I'll be a Husky for life. Love you guys. Let's go! Up next to the podium, from just a little bit north of Connecticut, let's hear it for Alex Carey. UConn Nation, let's go! <laughs> Thank you guys for everything. We wouldn't be here without you guys and the support, and you guys are the best fans in the country, so thank you. Enjoy back to back, and you know, thank you guys for everything. Thank you so much, Alex. You know, listen, he wasn't here last year, but we had to get him one, didn't we? Welcome to the podium, hey! Spencer! Just want to say thank you for all the support. You know, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish this without you guys. You know, we, we feel like we have the best fans in the country. And, uh, you know, I, I was only here for a year, but, you know, I'll be a Husky for life. And thank you for everything. So. Thank you, Cam. Next up to the podium, it is the most recent Husky of Honor and the MOP himself, Tristan Newton! You know, I just want to come up here and say thank you for all the support that you guys have given me the past two years and supporting the team. Uh, without you guys, back to back wouldn't have been possible. And, you know, thank you for everything. Citizens of the basketball capital of the world, one more time, your back-to-back -back national champions, the Yukon Huskies! Two in a row, six. Donovan, hold the trophy up. 
Celebrating with this crowd, the crowd loved it, and here they are posing with that back-to-back -back national championship trophy in downtown Hartford, the basketball capital of the world, yep. with confetti in the air, Kate. We heard that numerous times from all of the speakers. This is the basketball capital of the world, Storrs, Connecticut. We brought it here to Hartford, Connecticut, and also heard repeatedly, these are the best fans in the world. And also, I think I heard a three-peat multiple times. They are ready to do this again next year, Eric. Well, we heard it from the politicians for cert for sure, from Susan Bicewitz to the governor to the mayor. Uh, but we also heard Dan Hurley we say, listen, we're going to come back coach. and try to run this thing back and, yep. and do the same thing again. Uh, sort of interesting, you know, we talked about this earlier, Kate. Last year, Tristan Newton saying at this rally, uh, saying thank you, but I'm going to go into the draft. We no did big not announcements, hear anything. but it, it did it did catch my attention that Alex Caravan also didn't say I'll see you back here next year. Many people have assumed that he would be back or he hasn't made any announcements yet. He didn't say it today. Nobody making news. I don't know what to read into that as the uh, pep band hits the fight song. Yes, yeah, they're they're playing us out one last time for the season, closing out this uh, victory parade and rally as the team is signing autographs. You can see there Donovan Klingen next to um, uh, the rest of the players there. We've got Tristan Newton, the MOP, Most Outstanding Player. He won a bunch of awards this season as well. I mean, really, this is an outstanding team, a record-setting team. So... Well, and, and no doubt, I mean, Tristan Newton, so many people last year before the tournament run started said he's just not your traditional point guard. He can't run the offense the way Kempin did, the way Shabazz did. Well, he certainly proved he it proved wrong. It. He not only went back-to-back, -back, he was most outstanding player at the uh, national championship and, and really just put up remarkable numbers. Uh, you know, he had four triple-doubles during his UConn career, the last of them coming in February in the game against Villanova, where it just about blew the roof off the building uh, when he passed the ball out to Alex Garaban, who hit the three, got him that last assist, and his fourth triple-double. What a remarkable career. He's already in the Huskies of Honor as a first-team All-American, and he's going to be in the uh, in the rafters there at Gamble Pavilion They hung forever. his number, yeah. This is fantastic. I mean, literally, what, what a season, what a win, what a day here in Hartford. They really knocked it out of the park with this victory parade and But uh, certainly a lot of excitement made up for it and uh, warmed yeah. us up. It's beautiful. I mean, you couldn't ask for a nicer day to at least celebrate with uh, 40,000 of your closest friends, right, here in downtown Hartford. And that's basically what everybody wanted, just to have a good time, dance, maybe sing, do some cheers, get an autograph, take some photos. And, and you can see the players are still up there on the podium. They're signing autographs. Uh, they're, they're sharing this time with their fans. Cam Spencer right there taking a picture of the crowd. He said, you know, just in one year here, he started at Loyola down in Maryland. He went to Rutgers for a year, showed he could play in the Big Ten, came to Hartford and now said, I'm a Husky for life. I mean, what a remarkable choice he made to come in the transfer portal and, and really change, change his trajectory to, to turn out to be that, that sharp shooter from three that the team needed and that crazy spirit as well coming out pump, pumping that fist after a big play well and you had said that just a short time ago too eric i think the husky mentality is husky for life once you're a part of the team you're a part of the team forever and that's what we see when people come out to games when fans come out but really the whole state you know this is this is a husky state connecticut huskies and uh, i think that's what we see when we have wins like this it's a it's a state win 
Well, we, you know, listen, we've got uh, we've got the sun down in uh, at Mohegan. We've got the travelers that comes every year. But really, in this state, this is our team. And whether you went to UConn or you just live here or you just uh, became a Husky, they're your adopted team. Yep. This is what this state uh, lives and dies Correct. for is Husky basketball. And, you know, and on the women's side, too, you certainly uh, there's a championship trophy here for the men. But the women's team, too, I mean, they had AZ Fudd go down and still made it to the final four. Yep. Two teams in the final four, a remarkable accomplishment. And then to have them do that, despite being only really six or seven players deep on the bench, and then the men go and win the whole thing, back-to-back -back national champs, pretty yeah. remarkable. Well, and you know what? We're Connecticut natives. I think we bleed blue. And we've just been shown that this is a true blue blood team, right? That's what they've been fighting for, that recognition. At I think they got it. Well, listen, we had uh, Unkwa Sonia out on the parade route. We had Luke Hydash out there. Uh, we had Drone 3, Chris yep. Perkins operating that throughout the day. We appreciate them, everybody braving the cold yes. uh, to celebrate the Huskies. I appreciate you having me. I, I, I normally only get my 30 minutes on Sunday, Kate, so no, I got to come out here and run my of, mouth about my favorite You're a wealth of U team. UConn knowledge. You went to UConn Law School. I did. So I am an alum. You're an alum, so we appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here with me here uh, on a blustery Saturday in Hartford. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed our special team coverage of the UConn Victory Rally and Parade. Go Huskies! Have a great day, everybody.